Well, hey, what do you say? It's been a while since I've done this. And uh, what I mean is I haven't used my Weber grill in a long time. This summer, actually, be the first time since last year, since I did any ribs. And the type of ribs I'm going to be doing here are the ones like my dad used to do when I was a kid. Uh, I'm sure everybody will agree that the few things that you run across in your life that will bring back fond memories would be uh, old photographs or videos, music, of course, and food. I remember my dad, he used to be on, on the grill all a lot. He was always setting things on fire, barbecuing something up. He was uh, always hard at it. He used all kinds of grills, from uh, gas grills, he had hibachi grills, he had smokers. He even had uh, one grill that I, uh, he told me to build when I was a teenager, out of brick. Using the wrong kind of brick. He used it a couple of times, which was nice. I'm glad he did that. Anyway, when he did his ribs, here's he would take, do the ribs by cutting them up. And instead of the low and slow method that everybody seems to do nowadays, he would hack these things up like I'm fixing to do. He would season them up, throw them on the grill, and within the hour, we all had wonderful ribs to eat. Nothing smoked necessarily, but wonderful seasoning, wonderful bite. Those are one of my fonder memories when he was always cooking. And I say he was always cooking. He was overseas because he was in the Air Force. And my mother didn't quite cook the way he did. God bless my mother. I was just thinking about her yesterday. Since it had been 15 years, had to uh, have her funeral. But it made me think about my dad, too. My dad was always the cook. When he was overseas, my mother was real good at pot pies, TV dinners, frozen pizzas, and whatever else. I think I'm gonna do with that one. I already took the membrane off. Got this large flap of meat right here. It doesn't have any bone in it. I can use that for something else later on. Uh, so I'm gonna cut that away from the bone. I just want the bony parts in here for, the, for these ribs. So my dad, when he came back from overseas, he, he always became the chef in the kitchen. He never used a cookbook. I know of. You'd be over there throwing things in the pot, sampling it with a spoon, smack his lips a few times to figure out what it needs. Put a little more of this, a little more of that in there. And somehow he always came up with the best food. Spaghetti sauce was wonderful. He made, made it all by scratch. He made the best Mexican food. Another side story on that is that before my dad met my mother uh, in, I guess, 1956, my mother had never eaten Mexican food before in her life. And it's my dad who took her out for the first Mexican food dinner. He grew up in a little town called New London, Texas, which is near Tyler, Texas. And in Tyler, Texas, they had a uh, Mexican food restaurant there. They made the hot sauce that became so popular for a long time. He uh, mastered the, what I think the skills of making the perfect enchilada. I just have never had a better enchilada than what my dad. I'm gonna put some secret spices on here. Secret spices meaning something that the barbecue pit boys call SPG. You know, what are our favorite rubs and seasoning? And of course you all know that our um, SPG this is great for uh, steaks and poultry, fish, uh, pork, right? Even on your Cheerios in the morning. Well, I got your SPG. Got some pepper, sprinkle it on there generously. I love pepper. Get on all sides. We we'll use sea salt. Garlic powder. That's it. As I'm gonna cook them in my Weber grill here around this, what's called a vortex. I've uh, done many things with it in the many configurations. I've had it about 10 years. I've had this grill about 15 years. The grill is about 25 years old, about at it. Although this is not gonna be a real smoking session, I'm gonna throw a couple of chunks of applewood in there. I'm gonna tell you, those coals are hot. All around that is hot. Go ahead and get these ribs laid out. I'm gonna lay these out so they're all even. I'm gonna have to check these at some point. Uh-huh. 
a little extra seasoning on it. Well, I had to get the gravel out of it. All right. Yeah. Got a good fire in there. Now, got to cover it. Anyway, so I'm going to let that cook like that for about 45 minutes. That's all. 45 minutes, and I'll give it a good check. We'll see how it turns out. Okay, I got a little nervous. I've never done this with a vortex before. Ribs and vortex. It's a new thing for me, so I'm going to uh, see how it's turning out. It's been 30 minutes. Ooh, that's hot. All right. Didn't have my gloves handy. After I get done turning these around, I'm going to check the temperature on I'm shooting for 190. Remember this? Watch this. Open it up. Boom. Temperature. Check it out. In the meantime, I'm going to make a, a brief deviation. I took that flap and the meat with the lesser bone in it. I marinated it in a uh, a mix of pineapple juice, Italian dressing, and some Aloha sauce. What I want to do is sear these real quick. I don't want to get these too hot though. I just want to get them nice and seared. It's kind of like doing a skirt steak in a way. Get a nice little bit of char on them. It'll take the temperature about 130. If I can do with those at some later, later point, I can cut them against the grain because it's going to be tough meat. You know, use them as a well, it like a pork chop, I guess, or a pork steak, except, like I said, it's going to be tough. That's why i got to cut it against the grain, and probably thin, too. Sure smells good. Anytime you mix some Asian flair to anything, it's like the best. And Aloha sauce comes from Hawaii. The pineapple juice in there gives it more of a tropical flavor. And, of course, the Thousand Island has the oil and other spices in it, and the vinegar, which I love. It's a great marinade by, this, by itself. Look at that. Keep her going. We'll flip it around. Well, I'm sure everybody knows now that you can cook pork safely at 145. So, so no, I don't plan on consuming these at a temperature less than that. I'm not going to be using these tonight. What I will do is in the future, I will probably uh, pull them out of the freezer, sous vide into four, for one, to 145, make another meal out of it. Look at that char. I'm gonna re dip. A little bit of marinade, a little bit more of the, the law sauce on there. Gives it more, a stronger flavor. My kids are growing up. And we had lived in Hawaii, and I'd learned how to use Aloha sauce over there. Our favorite meal was pork chops with Aloha sauce. And then all the many years later, they still mention it to me, like, Dad, we need to get together. You need to cook up some of your Aloha pork chops, which we haven't. We're all doing our own thing nowadays. But I'm going to go ahead and pull those off. And then what I'll do is chill them. They're cooked on the outside, but the inside isn't done enough. Like I said, I'll, I'll flash chill them and put it in the freezer. So, so far, I'm gonna cook the ribs the way my dad used to, with the vortex included as a method of heating. I'm all, I also did the uh, Lohas, uh, the marinade for that uh, flap to get a little Hawaiian tinge to it, because I lived in Hawaii for four years, fond memories there. I'm going to add another memory to all this, and that's when I lived in North Carolina. Now, they didn't have this when I lived in North Carolina. Anybody from North Carolina, you're probably looking at it like, come on, Earl. But anyway, the Sticky Fingers, uh, Smokehouse, Sweet and Tangy Carolina Gold, because Carolina barbecue is vinegar-based. Here we have water, sugar, vinegar. So it's got more sugar than vinegar. Carolina would be more vinegar than sugar and probably some hot pepper to go with it. Well, I should have cut it first. That's fine. Get that lid. I 
Check this up. Give them a good slathering there of this fine Carolina gold. I think I'll do four of them total. Yeah, I can smell that vinegar in there. It smells good. Love vinegar. The rest of them are coming off. I can decorate them up any way I want to in the, at a future date. Thing is, they're done. They're gonna be a little crispy, which I want. I don't really want the fall off the bone version. Let them rest. And these, give them about a 10 more minute ride. So these are about done. And I appreciate you watching while I'm doing this. I had fun doing it. Um, what sides? Well, I'll probably, I got some butter beans, canned butter beans, and I've got some greens that I'm going to cook on the stove. I'm done with this part. Y'all have a great evening.